Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so I've been busy. I've been kind of a little scant a little bit lately because I've been working on a new pattern. Uh, so I've had a couple of you that have asked for like two color scrub caps. Well, this scrub cap doesn't use any elastic and it doesn't use, doesn't have buttonholes. It has an opening, but there's no buttonholes. And uh, I have a pattern for it over at, on my blog. Anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do. I found some of this really cool fall fabric at our Walmart, and so that's what I'm going to do. I've got also made this little, little turquoise feather one. Anyway, I'm going to show you, so in case you're, we still don't have any elastic at our Walmart, and I could order like 100 yards at, at uh, Amazon, but I'm not fixing to do that. And anyway, there's always going to be nurses, and there's always going to, nurses are always going to need scrub caps, so it's not just a COVID thing, but, so let's go ahead and get started with this. This is a, a two color scrub cap. What you're gonna need is to download the pattern. It's over at myhallcloset.com. So be sure and uh, grab your free pattern. Uh, you might need to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber on my blog, but that'll be okay. Download the pattern and print it. You're gonna print it to actual size, not fit to page. And there's a little one inch square. There's one here. It's the outside and so I have a this really neat grid ruler and so I can just put it down and I can see that that's one inch all the way around or this solid black one so you don't have to worry about whether it's the inside of the line or the outside of the line but print it to the actual size and I've got it printed with the red marks and stuff on there the red but you can just print it to grayscale okay so you don't use up all your color stuff so we'll cut those out in just a second we're going to use our paper scissors this is some of the supplies that you'll need paper scissors to cut your pattern, fabric scissors to cut your fabric, two cute pieces of fabric, and uh, a seam guide or a, uh, yeah, one of these things. Does it say what it is? It? Oh, it's a sewing gauge, a little bitty ruler, some pins, and some scotch tape to tape your pattern together. You're going to need two colors of fabric. Uh, and you don't have to use print, you can use something else, but this is going to be the main fabric. You're going to use a, a third of a yard of that, and then your secondary color or the complementary color, you're only going to need a fourth of a yard of that. These are 45 inch wide fabrics. They've already been washed and pressed. Washed them in hot water to kind of make sure they're shrunk before we put them together. I have my pieces cut and uh, matching them up, and this is, this says the front band part A and front band part B. March, match to part B and match to part A. So, and I've left a little bit of fab fabric, a little bit of a um, piece of paper past this line. I cut all of them on the dark line, but I'm going to match those two little hash marks and use my tape and tape that down. And then, now, you'll notice that it says Please do not steal. I wonder why I said that. I'm so sorry, y'all. But you can make as many of these as you want to make and sell and give away and bless whoever. But please don't steal my pattern and sell my pattern. Okay? I've been very generous with this. I've had it stolen a couple of times. And they've very graciously taken down their little selling sites but not until after they've sold a couple of hundred of my patterns. Uh, anyway, so you're going to tape these two pieces together. This is going to be the tie, and about 36 inches long is what it's going to be once and it's cut on the fold. This is cut on the fold, and this is cut on the fold, but these don't tape together. This pattern doesn't have any elastic, no uh, uh, buttonholes. You'll be glad about that. And then the crown part, you can leave it like this, or you can take a piece of paper, and I've got it folded in half already. I have a dark shadow. I'm going to have to fix that. Oh, that sounds like a scary movie from my past. Uh, fold your paper in half, and then you can just cut around this. I'm going to use my paper scissors. You can draw it first if you want to. If you need to pin it in place, you can. Cut it. And then you don't have to worry about keeping it on the fold. You can just have it. 
And so I've got them cut several different, like this, I've got them in, in on the fold and the full size, just so it's convenient for whatever I'm doing. All right, so there's that, the crown, the front band. Then this, what, the way this is gonna assemble, this is gonna be your color, your second color section. And this is also going to be a second color section. And you've got a fold. You're going to have a seam here, but you're going to have a fold right here. All right? And then these two pieces will stitch together. And I'll show you all of that in just a second. So now we'll get ready to cut. Your fabric has a straight grain and a cross grain. The straight grain is where the selvage is, this little raggedy uh, factory edge. And there's not any stretch to that. And the cross grain, there's some stretch. And so I like to cut the length of my cap on the cross grain so it has a little stretch whenever I'm putting it into the cap, to the crown part. So I'm going to take this. This needs to be on the fold. And I don't need to fold it just like in half, like on the, on the factory fold. What I'm going to do is I don't want to cut that into that selvage, so I'm going to back up about an inch find where that fold would be here we go and fold it like that this is a new piece of fabric that that our Walmart just got in I don't live in the city so uh, Walmart is what we have for our fabric selections so put this on the fold at the top here and just a couple of pins you can use as many as you need to and this little dip, this little dot that's in the dip, that's important. And if you need to mark that, be sure you mark that. And then uh, my crown will fit in this area. Don't know that it'll fit here. It, oh, yeah, it will fit here. That's what I'm going to do is like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out with my fabric scissors. Got to get on this other side so I can get a good angle. been working on my tripod my camera set up and I haven't landed on something that I'm really happy with just yet but I will get there now if you want to make a larger ponytail part you can do that don't make it any longer but you can swing this out if you want to just a little bit before you cut it you can mark it with a pencil, but keep it this same length because of the, our, our bottom uh, contrasting band, okay? So there's that. Be sure you mark this little dip. And you're going to want to make a little tiny, tiny notch on the fold. Right there. And there. You can, you can mark it with a pencil if you want to, but just a little clipped-in notch works really well. Okay, so on this part, you actually could, if you wanted to, fold it and use this part of the pattern, just turn it over. It's okay, you can do that, like that. And then you don't have to cut all the way around. Now I've got this fabric down here, so I can go ahead and scooch that down if I want to, or you want to, or we want to. Get my hands out of your way. So you can see, and by scooching down into this little area, I saved a little bit more fabric. It's not a big deal because that's just a little scrap and you're not going to be able to do anything with that, maybe. Okay, so that gets that, so we also right here. You're going to want to put a little clip right there in the top part of the crown. Okay, and then we'll uh, get ready to cut the second color. It doesn't matter which you cut first, whether you cut these first or this one first. But I am going to, because this is the longest piece, I'm going to cut this one first. And I know that 
and I put it together as a pattern for you. This is two inches wide and I have a two inch ruler and a rotary cutter. So let me show you. Is that two inches wide? Two inches wide. I've got a rotary cutter. So I'm going to use that. You can use a pattern and a scissors. And I didn't tell you that you needed a rotary cutter because I don't want you to have to go and buy something. Unless you're going to be doing a bunch of these, then you may want to invest in a rotary cutter. To cut my band, I'm going to fold this in half. I used my pattern as the guide on how long I needed this. So I'm going to fold this in half because both of these are cut on the fold. I'm going to give myself, a, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit to give myself a little bit of trim off rim there. And this is a nice even edge. So get that there. Now this, the pattern includes a quarter inch seam allowance or maybe just a tiny bit over, but not quite a three eighths. And then, okay, so this is going to be for the top. And then this one is for the bottom. So this will be at the center bottom of the cap, this at the ponytail part, and this is going to be at the tippy top. And I'm going to scooch this in, and I'm going to do one cut down this way with my rotary cutter. I have loved, loved, loved hearing from all of you uh, about the scrub caps that you've made and how much you've liked the patterns and all of that just like thank you thank you so much for taking the time to email me and and commenting i love it i love it let's see where that rotary cutter is there it is make sure you keep your finger out of the way that's not fun. I'm going to use my scissors to cut this off at the bottom. Now you can mark this now if you want to. This little line is going to be a stitching line. We're going to leave this open to put our, our sash through, our tie through. And you can use ribbon if you want to, but I want to do this pattern where you did not have to have ribbon because if you can't find it, it gets real frustrating. You can't find the right color, or maybe the rib ribbons ravel out, and they're not the best option. So we'll just do everything 100% cotton, and we're going to be good to go. So if you wanted to mark this, you could just put a little, you would do it on both sides. Let me show you. We're going to put a little mark right there to where that's going to stop, and right there. Could put, put a pin through there like that and then lift it up and put the mark it's right there the same way over here let me flip it over and you actually only need to mark one of these you don't need to mark both of them they're going to match together but you don't have to mark both of them so we'll put little marks right in there and then we'll know we'll stitch to here back stitch stop back stitch and start again and then just leave this little opening. You also want to put a little nip in the center front and back I think I'm out of the frame. Put a little nip right there front and back. Okay, you can see my two marks that I have, and so I am going to, this is right at 3 eighths of an inch, right here on my uh, guide, and I'm going to back stitch this, and I've got it set to a straight stitch, and just about a three, just about a medium length, back stitch, and come back in, and then uh, just lift my needle up, pull over, and... Get back into that same little dot right there it is right there 
Can you see it? Stitch down, and I'm going to do a couple of stitches and then back stitch. And back stitch. And I'm going to open this and open the seam. Now you could take this to the ironing board, but you don't have to because it's such a short um, so short piece and you can see I've got an opening right there. And I'm going to top stitch this just to maybe about an eighth of an inch. And it doesn't have to be back stitched. So I'm going to make sure that I have, let me lift this up so you can see, I've opened up that seam and this is going to keep that out of the way. This is going to take the place of the buttonhole. Okay, and so there's two of these. So we're going to we're going to repeat that over here. And so this time, and we're right sides right sides together. So if you've got a print, this doesn't make a difference, but if you're right sides together, and so now I've got a long space in the short space because this is the the other end so it would be in reverse so I'm going to stitch this I'm turn the camera off and stitch this and I'll be back in just a second all right so I've matched the dots on the bottom of the crown and the dot in the dip and because we're dealing with bias there's some stretchy stuff going on here that I want to tell you about so I'm going to do a back stitch a few stitches forward a few stitches back and I want to pull this bottom part a little bit and then just let this one ease in. And then I want to make sure that I watch as I come around the bend to make sure that my notches match up. You can definitely pin this. Please by all means if you need to pin this, pin this in place. And I can tell if that's going to be, there's my two notches right there, and I can tell if that's going to go in pretty easily. And if it's a little off, that's all right, too. There we go. I mean, that's not more than like a fourth of an inch off. And I'm still putting some pressure on this bottom part and just feeding this top part in. I can tell that I'm going to come up even down here at the bottom. Now then to finish this off, there's a couple of things that you can do, several things that you can do. This is not the finishing finishing. I'm just talking about this seam. You can zigzag around this edge. This is how it looks. Let me see if you can see that. Let me get this away here for a second. This is how it looks whenever it's stitched in. Those have matched together there. Okay, and so uh, you can zigzag around the edge. You can pink it. Or, or you can serge it. I'm going to use the serger. This is serged, and now I want to start at the bottom of the ponytail part, the ponytail pouch part, right there. I'm going to match those two edges together. And again, you can pin if you want to, and I'm going to come up into this dot in the dip should have been a rock and roll song an old rock and roll song or something let me get that thread around a little back stitch Make sure I'm not going to catch that in my seam. And that's even. That's all even. And 
that's the way that looks. Now it's time to put our band in place. <clears throat> so this opening is actually going to be to the front side, but I am going to wrap it around. I'm going to do it from... I want the top stitching on the top side. I think that will be easier for y'all. So what I'm going to do is this will be the second part. So make sure of where the opening is. Now, we need to find the, the center. Two things. We've got our, our center notch right there, but we want to go, see where the opening is right here? We want to go to this one. And we're going to put the right side of the orange to the wrong side of the fabric. And this is the bottom. This is the shorter section, so it's the bottom. And I'm going to pin that. And I am using pins. I know y'all are going to be so surprised. I am using pins. And pin. Now then, the middle, there's my notch at the top on the long part of the orange. And again, I'm right side of this to the wrong side of the patterned piece of fabric. And if we got all of our seam allowances right, then that lays in like that like that. And so we'll just keep going on around. Make sure we're straight. There we are. All right, and then before we stitch, we want to just make sure, like when we wrap this around to the front, that we've got the right side to the front, okay? So just, it, it never hurts to double check because unless you're just like really best friends with your seam ripper, you know, we have a different camera angle for a minute, but that'll be okay. So what we're gonna do is, using our, uh, now I'm just using my presser foot as my stitch width and so it's just a smidge, very small smidge over a quarter of an inch. Make sure my fingers are not in the way. A little back stitch to start off. And I'll just speed through this. So this is what this looks like, all right? And we're gonna catch all of this on the inside. Now, if you wanna press this, you can. Let me show you my favorite way to, to get this even. So I'm gonna make sure that this stitch is even here. And then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna use pins. <gasps> I know, I know, I know. Here we go, some more pins. And so what I'm gonna do is even up these raw edges and fold this in half. Now, you could go to the ironing board and press this, and then press this in a, a quarter of an inch under, uh, but this is, you know, sometimes I'm just lazy, and sometimes I just hate running back and forth to the ironing board. Now, if I was making evening gowns, and really nice, or suits, or something like that, because I used to do that, I would definitely be at the ironing board.
So match that one, make sure that's even. And notice that I didn't get these pins too close down to the to where my seam is going to be. So I'm going to take a little picture, a little photograph for my uh, instructions. So just uh, give me a little second. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is, and you can just finger press these this seam allowance in and you could measure, you could use that little gauge, or you can just turn under about what that looks like. And you want to make sure that you have enough over, not too much, but enough to cover your seam whenever you, we're going to top stitch this, and so we want to be able to cover that, that little seam right there. So we're going to pin this all around, and whichever way is easier for you to get a hold of this thing to do this, I want to make sure that I have my, uh, seam, you know, so I don't have much of my my fabric caught in that. I want just only my seam caught in there. That didn't make a whole lot of sense. It's really easy to get this folded too far back and so then you wind up with your your stitch being way back in in this area. That's what I'm trying to say. So kind of give that a little tug as you push that in and then fold that under. Now I'm running these pins this direction because I know whenever I get it on the sewing machine that's going to be the right direction, but you can run them across if you want to. Now I'm going to finish getting this pinned in place and then we'll come back and stitch it. So as I look at this, that's where my pin is there, that's where my pin is on the back side. It's all pinned and ready to stitch. I like to start my stitching, starting in my stitching, at the, the bottom side of the ponytail pouch. Pull that pin out so I don't sew it. Little back stitch. Make sure I'm not fixing to sew any of the other fabric that I don't want stitched. And I'm watching my seam. I can see my threads right there. And then that my little fold is in the right place. And I'm stitching really close to the edge. Just take your time. It's all stitched all around. Now this can like they could fold it back like that. You can fold your cap back like that or just a little half turn. Here's the opening for the tie and there's not an opening on the back side and this is how the stitching came out on the back and I, like here I got a little mm, off of that but that's okay. This, this is better here but I didn't get like over into this part. That was the main thing that I wanted to make sure that I didn't that I didn't do. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we're going to make the tie, and then we'll be fit. String it in there, and we're done. I went to the iron board and pressed this in half. This is the tie, the long tie, and then I pressed in half again, folding these edges in. I did one side and did the other so that I can have me a, a easy fold over. Then I also folded my ends in, so that those are ready to stitch. And uh, I'm going to pull that out just a tiny little bit. There we go.
Okay, so that's even across the end. Now, sometimes this is a little tricky. Sometimes your machine might want to grab it and hold on. So what I'm going to do, or grab it and jam it down into the the guts of your machine. I'm going to put one stitch. I'm not starting off of the edge. I'm starting into my machine. I mean into my tape, my tie. Just a couple of stitches and then back stitch. Get to that corner, put my needle down, and then pivot. Make sure my stuff is even. And again, go slow. Take your time. Don't get in the fast lane, speeding, and all that stuff. I'm stitching just on the edge, and you can come back and stitch this edge if you want to, but I'm just going to stitch the one edge. You can also use bias tape if you want to. Now I turn the camera off for a minute, but as we get to the end, make sure that your ends are turned under. Give yourself a little room to maneuver. Don't stitch your fingers. And a little back stitch. There we go. There's that, and now we're ready to. We're going to put a safety pin in the end of it. We've got the safety pin in the end of the, the tie, and we're going to thread it in towards the bottom of the cap through that little opening. And since we're not going to use any elastic, we're going to find the middle of the tie at the bottom of the ponytail cap and we're going to secure it with a stitch. So this, there's that. Alright, then just pull that through. Let me trim those. Oh, that's already trimmed off. Get that safety pin out of there. Even this up, so that's halfway. Get that, get those gathers off of there. So I've got the ends lined up here into this. All right, and that's even. And there's my middle. And I'm going to do a stitch in there, a little back stitch in there. Okay, we got the strap even where it was half and half. And, uh, you know, fit it through the little openings and made sure that the center of the strap matched to the center of the back of the ponytail part. And to finish it up, I just did a little back stitch. I didn't even go all the way across. I just made sure that I caught the tie like that and back stitched back and forth a couple of times and that secures that. So then all you have to do is scooch that down, wrap that around your ponytail, scooch both sides down, wrap that around the ponytail, bring it to the front and give it a tie like that. You tie it in a bow or whatever but then that holds your ponytail there without having any elastic. And then go ahead and the, the buttonholes are the buttons, not the buttonholes, no buttonholes, the button places are marked on your uh, pattern so that you can go ahead and add little buttons for the mask. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're inspired. Uh, you know, be sure, you know the drill, be sure to like and subscribe and share me with your friends and I will see you next time. Bye.